welcome back. Uh, in the last lecture, I started discussing about the Dirac uh, Fermi uh, path integral formalism. So, let us continue from where we left off in the last lecture. Uh, we started with the Lagrangian for the Dirac field uh, as the expression that is given here in the red box. And uh, on that basis, on the basis of this Lagrangian, we derive, uh, we obtained the path integral uh, the generating functional for the green functions full green functions for the free direct field as the expression that we have in the green box at the, at the bottom of the slide. This is the normalized generating functional with the normalization factor being represented by 1 by n and the normalization is represented by the expression that is uh, uh, given in the green box at the bottom of your slide. It is obviously obtained by omitting the source terms uh, and in this particular uh, path integral uh, the generating functional eta bar x is the source term corresponding to psi x and eta x is the source term corresponding to psi bar of x. Now, we do the simplification of the generating functional. We have got the definition of the generating functional. Our objective now is to arrive at a simplified version of the generating functional. For this, we introduce the matrix S inverse, which is given by the expression in the red box. And in terms of this matrix X S inverse, the generating functional takes the form given in the blue box in the middle of your slide. And we abbreviate the expression in the in the round brackets as as q of uh, psi and psi bar, where q, uh, q psi and psi bar are represented by the expression that is given in the red box here. Uh, now what we do is we find those values of psi and psi bar which minimize the value of q. Uh, in other words, we minimize q subject to, uh, subject to or with respect to psi and with respect to psi bar. It is quite a very uh, elementary exercise and the results that we get is that uh, psi minimum is uh, equal to minus s eta and psi bar minimum is equal to minus s bar minus eta bar s and the value of the minimum uh, q that is q m is equal to minus eta bar s eta. This is can be done uh, can be obtained by taking the derivatives and equating them to 0 with respect to uh, the, uh, the derivatives of q with respect to psi and psi bar and then equating them to 0 we get these results straight away. Now, we expand q into around q m and expanding q around q m we get the expression that is given in the red box at the top of the slide and in terms of which when we write the generating functional uh, we get the expression that is here in the green box at the bottom of the slide. And please note this point here uh, that uh, the q m term is uh, coming out separately and the, the uh, other terms the psi and psi bar dependent terms are coming separately in this particular ex expression for the generating functional. And also note the fact that uh, as we have just shown q m is independent of psi and psi bar. So, this enables us to simplify this expression as we shall see in the next slide. Uh, when we do the simplification wh what we can do is we take this uh, ex expression uh, in the exponential of uh, i integral q m we can take this outside the integral sign why because as I mentioned just now q m is independent of psi bar and psi which are the integration variables and therefore be, q m being independent of the integration variables we can take this term involving q m outside the integral uh, and the expression becomes what we have in the green box at the bottom of your slide. Please note uh, and this uh, exponential i integral q m dx now appears as a prefactor to the path integral. Now, our next exercise uh, is to uh, write now uh, the there are two um, 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 simplifications involved here two steps involved here the first step we write qm in terms of its value that we obtained earlier uh, minus eta 
uh, bar s eta you would recall that is the value that we obtained uh, when we minimized q, q with respect to psi and psi bar these were the values of q m which represent the minimum value that is the value of q m and that we have retained in the blue square here. And the second part is um, the simplification of the path integral. Uh, using this property that is here in the green box that we derived in the earlier lecture, uh, by using this property we are able to simplify this path integral and this path integral takes the simple form of determinant of minus i s inverse. So, we now have now we look at the normalization. In the normalization the uh, the source terms are absent otherwise the situation remains more or less the same and because the source terms are absent we can write this in the form of psi bar s inverse psi as the exponent uh, as the term in the exponential. And when you use the same formula that we had used earlier, let me go back to the previous slide. This particular formula for q m uh, minus uh, it, uh, uh, sorry, this form uh, formula that is there in the green box here, integral d alpha bar d alpha exponential of minus alpha bar a alpha is equal to determinant a. When I use this formula and I substitute in this expression which is here in the in the uh, blue box here, the expression that I get is determinant minus i s inverse. So, now we have got two results. We have got one result n is equal to determinant minus i s inverse and uh, the other result that we have here is in the earlier slide and that that has given us this expression uh, which is here in the uh, in the purple and the yellow slides together uh, uh, purple and yellow boxes together so using these two expressions if you see the factor of determinant minus is inverse is common to both the expressions and that gives us when uh, when this expression is uh, eliminated because this appears in the numerator and in the denominator what we are left with is the generating functional takes the very simple form which is given in the green box right at the bottom of your slide the normalization and the normalization factor and the same exp determinant expression that appears in the numerator they cancel out and whatever remains in the numerator represents our generating functional for the free direct field. Now, let us see let us explore the S matrix the S inverse matrix that we have introduced for as a simplification tool so far. Let us explore that particular matrix we write the S matrix no, not the S, ma S inverse matrix this is the S matrix we write the S matrix in the form which is in the red box here and this is nothing but the clean Gordon operator or the negative of the clean Gordon operator. So, what we infer here is uh, that uh, the S matrix does exist and the S matrix is given by this expression which enables us to arrive at the S inverse matrix which is uh, also um, which has been used in the previous calculations. In other words the existence of the matrix, uh, matrix S inverse has been established by this expression by using by postulating this expression for the S matrix we work out the expression for s inverse s and thereby we find that uh, s inverse s gives us the delta function. Now, we look at the free propagator of the direct field. We, we, we worked out the generating functionals to get the free propagator. We simply take the functional derivatives uh, and we for the two point propagator or the two point function we work out the expression which is given in the red box here and what we find is it is given by i of s x minus y where recall s is given by this expression here in the red box which we just discussed. So, let us now summarize 
our formula for the free propagators of the scalar field that is the clean Gordon field and the spinal field that is the Fermi direct fields. Uh, for the scalar fields we have the Lagrangian which is given in the uh, red box here and which is equivalent to the Lagrangian which is given in the blue box and that yields the two point function i delta f x minus y where delta f is the Feynman propagator. And, uh, and delta f satisfies the condition that we just talked about uh, box plus m square. This is the clean Gordon operator uh, and delta f x minus y is equal to minus delta 4 x minus y 4 dimensional delta x minus y. For this finer fields the Lagrangian we have started with is the expression that is given here in the blue box that takes the form psi bar s inverse psi uh, recall the definition of s inverse and uh, in this case the two point function is found to be i times s of x minus y. So, this certain common properties here in each case it is seen that the propagator is the inverse of the operator appearing in the quadratic term in the Lagrangian and uh, in fact this particular expression can be used as a definition for the propagator as well. Uh, re, uh, to reiterate the propagator is the inverse of the quadratic term in the Lagrangian. And for the this was for the free direct field uh, for the free uh, for the interacting direct fields we can use this relationship which we have derived earlier in the context of scalar fields with interactions the same uh, expression uh, uh, literally holds uh, in the context of the interacting direct fields and we have the version uh, in the context of the direct field given in the red box here at the uh, middle of the slide where z0 is the is the free field prop, uh, free field generating functional which we have just derived to be the expression given in the green box here at the bottom of the slide. Now, we come to the gauge fields in the context of gauge fields the two important fields are the electromagnetic field and the Young Mills field. Uh, I shall be focusing my attention uh, because of paucity of time on the uh, on the electromagnetic field. So, let us discuss uh, and let us start the discussion of the uh, electromagnetic field with the Maxwell equations. Uh, Maxwell equations in fact we have got the Maxwell equations and the Proca equations uh, both relate to spin 1 particles. Maxwell equations govern the dynamics of the uh, massless spin 1 particles that is photons uh, whereas, the massive spin 1 particles are like the W bosons are governed by the Proca equations. We shall be focusing on the Maxwell equations. Uh, both equations are Lorentz covariant and uh, the in fact it was the covariant form of the of the maxwell equations that paved the way uh, towards uh, for einstein to arrive at the uh, uh, equation for general rel relativity so maxwell equations uh, we start with these are the four maxwell equations uh, uh, and uh, these their uh, uh, relevance or their uh, physical interpretation we have on the next slide. Uh, the first is divergence of the magnetic field is 0, curl of the electric field plus the uh, plus the time rate of change of the magnetic field is 0, the divergence of the electric field is equal to the electric charge and uh, finally, the curl of the magnetic field minus the rate of change of the electric field with respect to time is equal to the current. So, the first one as I mentioned is divergence B is equal to 0, divergence of the magnetic field is 0. This is, this is simply the mathematical representation of the fact that there are no magnetic charges. Then we have curl E plus the time rate of change of magnetic field is equal to 0. This is Faraday's laws of electromagnetism. Uh, a changing magnetic field produces an electric field. Uh, then we have divergence E is equal to rho. This is Gauss's law. Uh, the total charge inside a closed surface can be obtained by integrating the normal component of E over the surface. And then we finally have the fourth equation the curl of V minus the time rate of change of the electric field is equal to the uh, to the current. Uh, this is Ampere's law of course, more with the modified Maxwell term which uh, says that um, the, uh, the changing 
electric field produces magnetic fields. So, these are the physical interpretation of the four Maxwell equations. Now, the, these four Maxwell equations can be put succinctly by introducing a four vector potential A, which is defined as the, the scalar potential phi and the vector potential or the three vector potential let us call it uh, A. Uh, and the magnetic field can be represented as the curl of the three vector A or and, and the electric field can be represented as the negative of the time rate of change of the three vector uh, potential A minus the, uh, the gradient of the, uh, of the scalar potential phi. So, now the important thing is we have got four Maxwell equations and uh, of these the first two are homogeneous, the last two are no, uh, inhomogeneous and uh, it is interesting that uh, by introducing this uh, four vector uh, potential A or A mu, uh, we are the first two equations uh, are automatically satisfied since the divergence of a curl is always 0 and similarly the curl of a gradient is always 0. So, the equation 1 which is divergence B is equal to 0 and remember we are writing B as curl of A. So, it is divergence curl of A. So, that is always 0 because it is the uh, and divergence of a curl. Uh, so, the first equation is automatically satisfied by the definition of uh, A uh, of P in terms of A and similarly, the second equation um, homogeneous equation is also satisfied because the curl of a gradient is 0. Now, uh, a further compactness can be introduced into the notation by introducing the concept of the electromagnetic field tensor. For that purpose, we look at the right hand sides of the first two equations uh, E is equal to curl A and e, uh, B, I am sorry, B is equal to curl of the spatial uh, component A uh, or the three vector A and uh, E the, the electric field vector is equal to minus the time rate of change of uh, the three vector A minus the gradient of phi. Uh, and these can be written as components of a four dimensional curl which we call f mu nu and we define f mu nu which is called the electro electromagnetic field tensor whose properties we will discuss in, uh, in, in the sequel and that we represent as the curl of uh, as the four dimensional curl given by the expression in the green box at the bottom of your slide. Now, in the, in the metric plus minus 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 that we have been following throughout F mu nu that is the electromagnetic field tensor, it has the components uh, given by as you can see here there is a, a straightforward exercise if you look at F 0 i, the F 0 i th component of F mu nu turns out to be minus E i and uh, F i j component. Uh, where i and j are uh, 1, 2 and 3 respectively uh, are turn out to be equal to minus epsilon i j k uh, b k where epsilon i j k is the three dimensional totally anti-symmetric Levi-Civita tensor. The explicit expression for the electromagnetic tensor f mu nu is given in the matrix form in this slide. Uh, the first row and the first column in fact represent the components of the electric field and the other and the, the sub matrix, the remaining sub matrix represents the components of the uh, magnetic field. Please note all the diagonal elements are 0 because that uh, the tensor is anti-symmetric. So, the diagonal elements have to be 0 and uh, of course, uh, uh, because uh, of anti-symmetricity f mu nu is equal to minus f nu mu. The, the transformation of f mu nu under Lorentz transformations, well it transforms as an anti-symmetric uh, second rank tensor. Uh, um, obviously, it has two Lorentz indices mu and nu and therefore, it transforms as uh, an anti-symmetric second rank tensor and its transformation ex equation is given in the green box at the bottom of the slide. 
So, now the important thing is that if we write the electric and magnetic fields in terms of f mu nu, then the very definition of f mu nu as the four dimensional curl implies that the first two homogeneous equations uh, first two homogeneous Maxwell equations are automatically satisfied. First two homogeneous Maxwell equations are automatically satisfied by virtue of the definitions of f mu nu as a four dimensional curl. Now, we go to the inhomogeneous Maxwell equations. We talk about the inhomogeneous Maxwell equations. What are they? We, we have divergence of E is equal to rho and we have curl B. Uh, the uh, electric field uh, magnetic field I am sorry curl B minus the time rate of change of the electric field is equal to the current. Now, it can be shown uh, as you should see that both these equations are contained in the covariant equation uh, and, and del of um, mu f mu nu is equal to j nu uh, where j nu has the has the time component or the zeroth component as the charge and the spatial components as the current. So, this is the expression is easily verified uh, if, uh, if from the very first principles in fact, for nu equal to 0 we have since uh, f 0 0 is equal to 0 because f is uh, uh, anti symmetric and therefore, we have uh, del 1 f 1 0 plus del 2 f 2 0 plus del 3 f 3 0 is equal to rho. Now, f 1 0 is nothing but E 1 f 2 0 is nothing but E 2 and f 3 0 is nothing but E 3. Therefore, we have the divergence of E the, the electric field is equal to rho which is nothing but the third Maxwell equation. And similarly, for example, if we want to establish the fourth equation, uh, we write nu equal to 1. So, that we have f 1 1 equal to 0 and uh, about the rest of the components we have del uh, d 0 f 0 1 plus t 2 f 2 1 plus t 3 f 3 1 is equal to j 1. Uh, uh, if you put the respective values of 0 uh, of f mu nu in terms of the electric and magnetic field components we have minus d 0 e 1 plus d 2 b 3 minus d 3 b 2 uh, because of because f 0 1 is equal to minus e 1 f 2 1 is equal to b 3 and f 3 1 is equal to minus b 2. So, we substitute these values and what we get is nothing but the i uh, the first component i equal to 1 th component that is the first spatial component of curl B minus the time rate of change of the electric field this first spatial component and that is equal to on the right hand side j 1 which is what the fourth uh, uh, Maxwell equation mandates. So, the third and the fourth ma uh, Maxwell equations can be covariantly expressed uh, in the form of the expression that is given here in the green box at the bottom of the slide. And this cyclic identity uh, uh, for the electromagnetic tensor uh, is uh, easily verified. It is uh, by substituting the respective values, respective components uh, 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 by substituting f mu nu as the four dimensional curl. Uh, you sub simply substitute the definition of f mu nu and uh, by simplification a simple algebraic simplification we can establish the cyclic identity of f mu nu. Now, we look at the dual of f mu nu. The dual of f mu nu is defined as the f tilde of mu nu f tilde mu nu is defined as 1 by 2 uh, epsilon mu nu rho sigma of f rho sigma where epsilon mu nu rho sigma is the four dimensional Lebesgue tensor. Uh, and uh, totally anti symmetric and the components of f tilde mu nu in terms of the electric and magnetic fields are given in the green box in the uh, bottom of this slide. And because of the anti symmetry of this uh, 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 Lebesgue tensor, uh, we, it follows that the equation uh, d mu 
of f tilde mu nu yields the cyclic identity for uh, which is given in the uh, green box at the bottom of the slide. Now, from the mat uh, matrix expression for f tilde mu nu that is the dual electromagnetic tensor, we can derive the first and second equations quite straight away. Uh, uh, in fact, we can literally read out the first and second equations uh, uh, of the Maxwell set and uh, therefore, we have uh, right from, from the from this dual uh, electromagnetic tensor divergence of B uh, is equal to 0 and curl of E is equal to 0. So, the complete set of Maxwell equations can be written in terms of the electromagnetic tensor F mu nu and its uh, dual F tilde mu nu in the form that uh, D of covariant derivative of F tilde mu nu is equal to 0 and D mu of F mu nu is equal to J nu. These two equations together the equation in the red box and the equation in the green box together uh, uh, comprise or imply the entire set of uh, Maxwell equations. Now, we come to the issue of gauge transformations. Now, we have got to understand a fundamental thing which is special to the this uh, electromagnetic fields. Uh, we, we, have repre we have introduced the concept of four potential uh, A mu uh, as uh, phi and the spatial A vector. Or, uh, uh, but the point is that when we are making this shift uh, or representing the, the combined electric and magnetic fields by this four vector uh, phi and A spatial A, uh, the the specification is not unique. Uh, in other words, it, it does not a, the A mu that we define here is not unique and we can in fact find uh, uh, a complete set or a uh, um, number of A mu's uh, which are connected by a gauge transformations uh, involving a scalar function such that each of it each of this satisfies the requirement of imposed or the constraint imposed on A mu uh, the, uh, by the Maxwell equations. So, let us try to understand this. Uh, if, uh, if we introduce uh, or if we change our components, our given components of A mu which are phi and A spatial A, if we change spatial A to spatial A minus the gradient of eta and phi to phi plus the time rate of change of eta, where eta is any arbitrary scalar function, uh, we find that we find that our uh, specification for A or the, uh, the Maxwell equations do not change, the electromagnetic field tensor does not change. Uh, in other words, uh, putting it covariantly, if I write A mu as A mu plus uh, D mu eta. Uh, these two are equivalent, uh, then we find that the electromagnetic tensor does not change. Uh, therefore, therefore, uh, in order that, that we are able to specify our unique representation of the Maxwell equations in terms of F mu nu or in terms of A mu, we have to impose certain rest uh, gauge restrictions. and. Uh, on the basis of introducing those gauge restrictions, uh, we then are able to establish a unique representation of uh, the uh, of the Maxwell equation. So, what we do is, uh, let us try to understand. Yeah, we, this is the definition of F mu nu, which is given here in the red box. We started with that, uh, and these are the Maxwell equations, which is in the um, blue box here, and the expression that we have are the Maxwell equations. Now, if I write, if I take the derivative of F mu nu equal to, if I write F mu nu in the explicit form here, what I get is the expression which is given in the green box here. The derivatives commute with each other and therefore, we can write it in the form 
of this second equation in the green box. The first equation can be written in the form of in the uh, form of the second equation in the green box because the um, the derivatives commute with each other. Now we choose a gauge. Uh, which is uh, in in because you see we have got the freedom we have got the freedom given by this expression a mu goes to a mu plus uh, d mu of eta uh, and we we can choose any eta which you we desire because the uh, frame and the Maxwell equations will be satisfied. So, we choose a particular uh, a, a mu or a particular eta as we shall see which satisfies a certain gauge condition and that gauge condition is represented by the expression in the red box here. And in this if I choose the, the expression or the, the restriction please note this is an imposed restriction. If I choose this restriction uh, given in the red box here, then what I get from the previous slide is that the second term vanishes, the second term vanishes and I get the box of A nu is equal to J nu uh, or, or expressing them explicitly I get the expression which is here in the green box at the bottom of the slide. Of course, in vacuum because we have no sources, we have no currents, uh, it simplifies to the expression the right hand side goes to 0 and we get the simple equation box of A nu is equal to 0. Right. So, uh, from here we will take uh, after the break we will take a uh, gauge field quantization and then we will work towards the path integral quantization of this uh, electromagnetic field. Thank you.